Hey guys, uh, my name's Billy McFall. Um, I'm an engineer at Red Hat. Um, I'm one of the two or three Red Hat representatives on FIDO and specifically VPP. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit today about the northbound um, connections of VPP um, for containers. Um, as I was going through the slide deck, I realized that I, the title has NFV in it, but I really didn't talk a whole lot about NFV. Um, a lot of the discussions earlier today, if you're in the room, talked about um, alternatives to DPDK, um, you know, a lot of um, XDP and EBPF, but a lot of their statements were, um, we're not as fast as DPDK, but we're getting there. So um, in the context of NFV, re the reason a lot of companies do use DPDK um, for NFV is because it is fast, and the NFV use cases need the high speed and the low latency. So um, even though I don't discuss a whole lot of NFV within the um, discussion, uh, the context is um, plugging in um, user space interfaces, specifically DPDK, um, into containers and Kubernetes. So um, luckily, I looked at the agenda and saw that um, before my talk, there was 40-minute talk on Legato and um, Conti VPP, because I would not have been able to do justice to the project um, as well as they did. So um, I decided not to add that to my discussion here. Um, I'm going to talk um, about uh, user space CNI. Um, and in conjunction, it requires another CNI, Multis. Um, both user space CNI and Multis were upstream by Intel. And um, so I've been working a little bit on the user space CNI portion of that. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about the network service mesh. So um, what is Multis? Um, like I said, it's a... Um, CNI that was pushed um, open source by Intel um, during um, KubeCon, and I think it was around 2017, they formed uh, the Kubernetes Network Plumbing Group. Um, it was a way to standardize how to add additional interfaces into a container. Um, so they've released the Kubernetes um, Network Custom Resource Definition Defecto Standard um, 1.0. And Multis is basically a reference implementation of that standard. Um, so what is Multis? Multis is a meta plugin. Um, uh, Kubernetes basically only wants you to have one CNI, so because it only has one interface on a um, pod. And so what Multis does is allows you to well, Multis is the one and only CNI from Kubernetes point of view. And then Multis goes in and lets you define custom resource definitions, which are basically what other information, other CNIs that you want to use and the data associated with them. So Kubernetes will call into Multis, and then Multis will circle through its set of custom resource definitions, calling each CNI. And then once they're done, it returns the information of the default CNI back to Kubernetes. And then it squirrels away in some log files some information about the other um, CNI's results that happened. Um, so because it is outside of Kubernetes, Kubernetes is not aware of these additional networks that Multis adds in or these additional interfaces. Um, Kubernetes is only aware of the default um, network. All right, so the user space CNI, um, it was also pushed upstream by Intel. Um, and Intel and Nokia and Red Hat and um, now Mellanox are working on this user space CNI. Um, the user space CNI allows you to insert um, DPDK interfaces into a container. Um, what this allows is um, high speed <coughs> user interfaces. Um, and it also allows um, additional layer two, layer three, and other tunneling <laughs> protocols to be pushed up into the container instead of limiting the container to just IP traffic. Um, it is leveraging Multis 
And so because it is doing that, um, Kubernetes is unaware of the additional interfaces and networks that are being added to the container. Um, it is um, currently supports both VPP and OVS DPDK. I'm working on the VPP part, and some of the Intel guys are adding some of the OVS part. But um, I believe the VPP is uh, more feature rich, and so we'll be able to add a lot more features to it going forward from the VPP side. All right, so just a little bit more information about what the user space is doing. Um, it is very early in, in um, development. Um, we don't even have a nice little logo or image. I noticed that when I was putting my slides together. Everyone else had the nice pictures, and um, I didn't have a logo. So it is very early on. Um, what it does um, when the CNI is called is it goes in using the Go API and calls into, well, okay, sorry. It calls the local v switch to create the um, interfaces um, locally on your local vhost. For VPP, it uses the Go VPP portion of it that was discussed earlier. Um, then um, the OVS DPDK does not have um, any Go API, so they're doing they're using some um, Go um, calls into their um, OS uh, their OVS um, CLI. Um, but this allows you to create uh, either a vhost user for the um, OVS or a MIF for VPP on the local vhost. Um, then the CNI will add. The, um, that interface into a local network based off some input JSON. Um, currently, it's just supporting some, um, layer two bridging. So you can define a bridge that you want to add the interface to. But going forward, it would be easy to extend that out to other protocols as needed. Um, so once um, it also will call into um, your um, IPAM CLI uh, and CNI and then take that data, can be then passed up into the container if need be. So once the local vSwitch is provisioned, the data is then squirreled away and passed up to the, um, to the pod so the pod can consume the interface. Um, so a little bit on network service mesh. Um, I have to admit going into this, I do not work on network service mesh. Um, one of my colleagues um, is going to present the service mesh portion, and he could not attend, so he left it up to me. So I'm going to do my best to describe it, but I'm not sure if I can answer a lot of questions on it. Um, also, what I'd like to say is um, when service mesh, network service mesh, one of the key concepts is it is data plane agnostic. Um, it, it can work with multiple data planes. However, probably one of the first data planes that we'll use is VPP because of all the features that it has. Um, so I would like to talk to it under that context. But it is um, data plane agnostic. Um, another thing about um, network service mesh is um, it is, has a strong play in running containers and Kubernetes, but Kubernetes is not required. It is just, it is, it will be useful going forward in that, but you can run service mesh without um, Kubernetes if you wanted to. Um, service mesh is a service abstraction um, that allows you, from a Kubernetes point of view, to plug a pod into a different pod or a pod into an external network. Um, much like um, I was talking about with Multis, um, it creates these uh, networks outside of the Kubernetes default network, so Kubernetes is not aware of the networking that it's doing. Um, it, one of the advantages of network service mesh is it enables uh, heterogeneous network configurations. Um, it'll support a large variety of tunneling protocols. Um, and um, it brings, like Multis, brings in uh, multiple payload types into a container, whether that be Ethernet, IP, MPLS, or any other tunneling protocols you might need for some type of NFV um, application. Um, one of its most powerful features is that it allows um, container app programmers to go in and do what they do best as far as the workload and not have to worry about more complex networking outside of the container. So if your workload needs to connect or it happens to connect to a VPN or it happens to connect to a firewall, the app doesn't have to worry about any of those 
um, while pro programming, it's taken care of outside of it. <coughs> um, so network service mesh, I mentioned earlier, is a service abstraction, but I'll mention again because it's a key point of it, is it, um, it abstracts out your, it makes you think of your network as a service. Um, and it also, because of the upfront planning and design, it, um, the networking payloads are not an afterthought. It is the upfront's design to feed these additional layer two MPLS payloads into a container. Um, it plays well with Kubernetes, um, doesn't co require any changes to Kubernetes, or doesn't affect the Kubernetes default network at all. So, um, for so summary and overview, so Legado, um, well, you had a long discussion on it before, but it allows you to insert user space interfaces into the default Kubernetes network. I mean, I'd be quite sure after hearing the, the um, presentation, but it's, it's a it's large feature-rich set. Multis and user space CNI adds um, CNI interfaces outside of the Kubernetes default network. Um, it allows some separation of control and data plane for your container. It's very early in development. Um, to your question, it doesn't have a lot of the network policy or the cross-pod configuration. It's right now it's very early on just doing plumbing of the um, DPDK interface into a container. And um, network service mesh is a service abstraction. Um, it's data plane independent um, and um, also inserts container networks um, outside the Kubernetes default network. Um, it could um, leverage Multis. Uh, maybe Legato going forward. Um, just have to wait and see if it's if it's um, possible or needed. Um, it is also early in development. I think they're trying to get up to 1.0. Um, I think they still have some work on integrating with the data plane. Is where that stands. So um, which depend which is better? I guess it depends on your use case and what you're trying to do. But all of these leverage the high speed and reach rich feature sets that are in PPP. Um, so, um, one thing I would like to say as a call to action is um, a lot of these projects do need help. They need coders. Um, if you don't like to code, but you like to tell people what to do, they can use some architects as long as you do it with a smile and a please. Um, and we definitely need a lot of valid use cases so that these can be tailored for real life situations that, um, that are needed. Um, and that was it. Thank you very much. I have a reference slide at the end with links to all the projects that you need. We've got some type of questions, so if anyone has Got to talk too fast. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, too fast. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We've got a little bit of questions, so if anyone has any. Yeah. Just good questions. Oh, yeah. So, uh, actually, I'm in, I mean, uh, full disclosure, I'm a CNI developer, Multis developer, okay. open shift. Uh, hey. Hey. <laughs> uh, how much of this sh could be replaced? I mean, Multis is great, and having multiple interfaces is awesome, but for these user space interfaces, some of them don't even really feel like network interfaces in the traditional sense. So how much of this could be replaced with like a Kubernetes? How much of this fits more into the Kubernetes device plugin model versus the CNI plugin model? So um, one of the current things we're working on with the user space CNI is making a device plug-in so that it can handle NUMA, um, CPU pinning, um, all the above. So the discussion is whether it's going to stay, a, become a full device plug-in or whether we're going to have a partial device plug-in but still use some CNI for, I think it should be a little bit of both, leaning more heavily on the device plug-in. Time will tell. We're, gonna, we're still we're talking through some of that yeah. stuff right now. Yeah, that's something we, we also need use cases for because when CNI was found started, the the ecosystem was a lot simpler. Yeah. And coming up with a really good inter like coming up with the, with a proper boundary between device plugins and CNI is still not. It's very ad hoc, and I think best practices for that are definitely. Necessary. Yeah, I mean the way I've always been told is device plugin is you use it if you have a limited set of resources, so something that will expire and you need to use up stuff like your NUMA and your. Um, well, not necessarily Numa, but you get into your CPU pinning and how many CPUs do you have and where can you place it. So, um, but I, I could see 
uh, it is one of those that walks the line and where did, which side should you mostly fall? Yeah. All right, thank you all. Sorry I talked too fast.